Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic, down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dean Blackman Show. Wednesday, February 15th, chilly day here on Long Island. We're now uh, going to go across the Atlantic uh, to the United Kingdom. Senior correspondent, Rhea Bow. Good afternoon, Rhea. Hi, Dean. Hi, lovely listeners. Thanks for joining us today. Bit of a weather report in the UK. Uh, it is not so good. It's a bit drizzly, plus four or five centigrade, which I know you don't working, but I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. I could look, but I'm not going to. But welcome to the weekly news roundup on the 15th of February 2017. Uh, it's uh, an under 30 minute show, so we're just going to get straight on with some news that I'm sure you definitely will have heard of and some you may not have heard of. So I'm, I'm going to start straight in with a light one. I've got one here. Uh, this is news about Ferraris and Lamborghinis, interestingly enough. Uh, a factory has been busted in Spain producing counterfeit Ferraris and Lamborghinis. I've seen the footage on this. These cars look good. I'm no expert, but certainly as it went round the car and did close-ups, goodness, I wouldn't have known. So if there are any crowd out there, it's a bit posh dealing with Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Get them checked or maybe not. I don't know. But if you're going to buy one, definitely double down on checking it because there's forgeries out there and they're saying this factory has been around for a while. But I thought that was quite interesting. Back to you, Dean. Wow. Unbelievable, Rhea. Um, the mainstream media here since last Friday, February 10th, has been incredible, Rhea. Uh, you know, I want to start with last Friday, popular mainstream news, American media company, The Skim, uh, had comments that uh, on the 10th, uh, President Trump lost his appeal to put his travel ban back in place. I mean, last month, Trump signed an executive order that temporarily bans all refugees and people from seven mostly Muslim countries from entering the U.S., Washington state sued the White House, arguing the ban is unconstitutional. A federal judge lifted that ban across the country. The Justice Department appealed to immediately put the ban back in place. The appeals court said, no way, but let's talk about it. Earlier this week, the court, the state, and the Justice Department attempted to hash it out. It's wild, Rhea. I don't know how much they hear in Europe or across the world, but that meant that the court ruled that the ban should stay benched while the court system decides whether it's constitutional, meaning refugees and people from those seven countries can still enter the, U the United States. I mean, it's people here in America. Trump and his supporters say the president has the authority to decide who comes and goes based on national security concerns. Critics say this is called checks and balances, and it's unprecedented for a president to challenge the judiciary branch's legitimacy like Trump has. In response to the ruling, Trump tweeted last Friday, see you all in court. So safe to say he'll appeal meaning America's new attorney general, Jeff Sessions, got his first really big assignment. So many think that this could go to the Supreme Court right away, and the Supreme Court still have the empty seat on the bench, meaning they could be deadlocked on a decision. That could push the ban back down to the appeals court. So this may be one long game of political shoots, and legal ladders. Back to you, Rhea. Wow, that's, that's amazing stuff. As it happens, I've just skipped a couple of stories down here. I did a little bit of research on this very subject because I know how big it is your end. It's nothing like as big here in the UK and in Europe. It's reported on, but it's very English, very stiff up, stiff up a lip, and it's just the basics. But they do report it, as it were. But 
again, nothing like what you're experiencing your end. I took a look behind the scenes as I do follow the money. And I found sort of four common links that I, I the people I, well, I haven't heard anybody but mention it. One of the key cases moving forward, because there's a few launched at Trump. One is by the ACLU. One is by the National Immigration Law Center. One is by the Urban Justice Center. And one is by the Immigration, uh, no, sorry, American Immigration Council. So I thought, okay, a couple of them are quite big. The others aren't so big. Where are they getting the money from to do this out? So I found a common link between all of them once I dug deeper and found that George Soros is funding all of them. Wow. So this is something I don't feel that you're hearing on the news. And I also got some numbers on one of them, only one though, and that is the ACLU that's sort of leading the charge. They've so far been funded to the tune of 35 million by George Soros. So... This guy has got his fingerprints all over this thing because he really doesn't like Trump, does he? And this guy is used to dealing with business like this. So I thought that would be um, of interest to you, Dean. Wow. Amazing. Amazing, Rhea. Really amazing. Incredible what's going on. You know, it is. It, it is. It, it's just amazing. You know, uh, it's uh, it's unprecedented what uh, is going on here. I've never seen it, at least in my lifetime. Um what's gone on the first 30 days uh, with a new administration here in the States. It's, uh, it's just incredible. It is incredible. And you, I think the problem is, is it's coming out onto the streets, which is forecast to become more, more unrest, because George Soros and the like has got a history going back to 2000 with Serbia, riots in Serbia he was funding. Um, you can go to the Ukraine in 2003. I, I could do a long list of where he does this kind of thing, this hate fueled exploiting emotional situations. But I'll whip over to another bit of quick bit of financial news. Um, I've been reporting on Bitcoin because it's not, <clears throat> excuse me, in the mainstream. And I'm just going to do some numbers on it. Oh, this week it was down 3.8%, but on the month it's up 17.1%. I'll keep reporting those basic numbers so people can hear what the rise and fall in Bitcoin. Quick news on the market for people that have investments, as in it seems like all the news is stacking up where they may well dump the economy. The, the big banks are not happy with Trump. And everybody's looking at the third quarter of this year for trouble to hit. So if you have investments out there, you need to just get some advice from someone you trust or someone you know to make sure that you're, <clears throat> excuse me, prepared for what is well, what people think are going to come up in the in the third quarter of this year. So just a bit of advice. Talk to someone you trust. Back to you, Dean. Thank you, Ria. I mean, this past Monday, the 13th. Uh, North Korea decided to push President Trump's buttons and test launch a ballistic missile. I mean, that's incredible. The U.S. and North Korea really aren't on friendly terms because North Korea has spent years trying to develop nuclear weapons and test out our missiles. You know, the president has vowed to be tougher on North, North Korea's nuclear program. And when the country recently said it's this way or the highway to testing a missile that could reach U.S. soil. Trump said no way he'll let that happen. You know, North Korea's re has been getting unbelievable testy. Literally, yesterday, the country launched, launched a missile, you know, on Monday that landed in the Sea of Japan. This came as Japanese PM Shinzo Abe was spending the weekend golfing with Trump in Florida, it was reported in the mainstream. You know, Abe called the move absolutely intolerable. He also reminded North Korea and the UN that resolutions prohibit the country from building or testing ballistic missiles. You know, meanwhile, Trump kept unusually quiet, but said that the US is with Japan 100%. Still, it's unclear what he's going to do about it. I mean, Rhea, this was North Korea's first missile launch since Trump's been in office. While the missile didn't go far enough to raise serious alarms in the U.S., this is a major test for how Trump will handle a country that's considered a huge global threat. 
Back to you, Ria. Yeah, I mean, it, they are something to deal with. There's been some dealings with, was it his brother or his stepbrother? He's not around anymore. Um, so I'm not sure what the story is about that, but I sort of caught a fleeting glimpse of, on that on the radio. Um, yeah, the test is upon us, isn't it, as this shifting power and the powers above are wrestling amongst themselves, the establishment against Trump and vice versa. And we're seeing how powerful the, the uh, establishment are. Right, on to a new one. Uh, news on U.S. cyber security, which I know we're really familiar with, but this is a, something a bit different. So I just don't report on the same old thing. Uh, the third uh, Raytheon, the third biggest U.S. military contractor, are gearing up since Russia were accused of hacking the Vermont power grid in all the mainstream outlets. It came out it was Russia, but then it turned out to be false. However, Raytheon are looking to spearhead the next step in cybersecurity with talks of being the forming of a new cybersecurity complex. So for those who don't know what that is or um, not that familiar with it, it's rather like the industrial military complex. Um, you have a saber rat, you have a saber rattler, i.e. terrorists or whatever, and then you have the knight in shining armor that comes and sells them stuff to protect them. Well, it looks as though we're seeing the forming of this new cyber security complex, which has not existed in our world before. So the news that we hear on TV of hacking and so on, which has accelerated enormously, don't expect that to go away because there's a new complex coming up right behind it. Quick news on Raytheon. They are the third biggest defense contractor and Lockheed Martin is the biggest. But Raytheon have got the teeth into this. So keep an eye on the stock. The stock is sitting at 151 at the moment. And I'll keep I'll keep an eye on the Raytheon stock and bring it to the news to see what happens to this. But if they get this right, they're going to make an absolute fortune on this. Back to you, Dean. Wow, that's some story that you just reported, Ria. That's incredible. It is amazing. We're going to see the forming of a new complex. And when you think about it, when you do it traditional kind of back in the day, mobsters and stuff, you'd have a guy go in, protection money and stuff. You need protection. Shopkeeper says no. Another guy comes in, roughs the place up. He goes Protection guy comes back, says you need protection. Then the shopkeeper works out that they know each other. And, and before you know it, there's a system running, which is much like the military industrial complex. And we're just seeing the forming of the cyber security complex. So that's what's going on there, Dean. Wow. Ria, uh, yesterday, Tuesday, the 14th, just happened to be Valentine's Day. And once again, uh, happy Valentine's Day to you. Um you know, just the drama just uh, continues yesterday. It's uh, here in the States. It's uh, it's almost like uh, who knew what, where and when. I mean, yesterday, first thing uh, all over the mainstream, even uh, mentioned in uh, the popular media company, The Skim. It's uh, breaking news yesterday here in the States was that the National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn, had resigned. I mean, just uh, incredible. Last December, you know, former President Obama slapped Russia with sanctions for interfering with the presidential election. The, intel the intelligence community says Russia did this to boost President Trump's odds of winning. Then last month, it came out that Flynn had been in touch with the Russian ambassador to the U.S. on the same day those san sanctions were announced. Flynn denied that they discussed the sanctions. Vice President Mike Pence publicly defended him based on the info information Flynn had given to him. I mean, it just goes, it just goes on and on. I mean, Flynn said that the Russian ambassador did discuss the sanctions and that Flynn mentioned he may have hinted that the incoming Trump administration would be open to lifting them. The problem is, since Flynn wasn't working for the White House yet and there's a law against regular citizens participating in foreign relation discussions, lots of speculation are, is really building right now, Rhea that he was on his way out for lying. Uh, I mean, last night, it came out that the Justice Department warned the Trump administration last month that Flynn misled them about the phone calls 
and that this could expose him to blackmail by the Russians. It's unclear what the White House did with that info. Yesterday, Flynn said he inadvertently briefed Pence and others with incomplete information on his phone calls with the Russian ambassador. I mean, it is very unusual for a team senior team member to exit the White House less than a month after a new president is sworn in. And there are still lots of questions without answers. Just uh, unbelievable what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to go away in a hurry, is it? I mean, um, I've heard some talk behind the scenes where the NSA are monitoring the White House and the administration. And I think in a nutshell, it's it's Trump against the establishment and they're going to do anything. And part of that establishment is the mainstream media. So it's everywhere. I know it's super hyped your end. And here again, it's another story. It's all very British. Just, the, you know, this is what's happened. And there's no drama at all on any of these incidences in the UK. So I, I find that um, you guys are going through it, aren't you? Bless you. We're going through a lot over here. Uh, I've never, as I said earlier, Ria, and to uh, all your listening audience in Europe and uh, everyone on throughout the world, uh, it is, uh, if, if, if you really don't have a handle what's going on here in the United States uh, with this uh, new administration, uh, I've never seen anything like this. It's uh, every day, uh, every day, it's, uh, there's, there's a story every day. They're out for him. I remember reporting lots of shows ago before he got in that um, obviously there was disappointment with half the nation, roughly, that he got in. And I was saying one thing you are going to see, you're going to see them hold his feet to the fire. <laughs> and you are, aren't you? You bet. You bet. So uh, what else do you have for us before I get into another story? OK, here's one. Do you remember the iPhone incident with the FBI? Um, the FBI wanted to unlock an iPhone. It was all in the news in the US and they um, they got Apple on. Apple said, no, we're not unlocking it um, because because of X, Y and Z. It's no good for the company. It could damage it. I'm sure everybody remembers that. Well, there's a bit of news come out. Uh, it's been revealed that an Israeli company called Celebites helped the FBI hack the phone. So this company in Israel hacked the iPhone to get the information. This case is old, but they have the hack to get into that iPhone, whatever iPhone that was. Well, it's just been reported that the company Celebite, who did the hack, has, has been hacked and the information to the back door to the iPhone is out there. Wow, it's unbelievable. I know. More hacking. That's, Can't say that, the word enough, can you? That's unbelievable, Ria. I know. It may, hey, look, before everybody goes, oh, the iPhone. I don't know if it's all the iPhones. I don't think anybody does. Well, listen, I've got, whatever to, iPhone. I've got to bring up that uh, I'm sure you're aware that uh, my uh, Samsung Note 4, um, my Galaxy Samsung Note 4, uh, the software in it uh, crashed on me this weekend on Saturday morning. I am aware totally. So I'm I'm right now I'm getting used to working uh working the iPhone plus the iPhone seven plus. Yeah, you've you've joined the elitist Dean. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it doesn't get hacked. I hope not. I hope not. But it's getting it's it's really challenging getting used to uh the changeover from the phones. You you're in the crowd now. I think you've got an Audi as well, haven't you? Uh two Audis. Yeah, right. You've got an Audi and an iPhone. You're that, right in amongst them. You'll be able right. to mix with the richest of the rich. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go on to another one. Right, here's one from India. The Bill and Melinda Foundation is shut down because of ties to big pharmacies. They've been over there trying to launch this foundation. They've gone, oh, no, you don't. We know what you're up to. You're tied into these big pharmacies. And you're looking to make loads of money. So that's a quick one. So they've shut down the Bill and Melinda Foundation in India. Back to you, Dean. Thank you, Ria. Listen, uh, today it just keeps going on and on in mainstream news and reported by the skim that uh, this morning, unbelievable news here and first reported uh, 
by NBC that the president was in the dark, that uh, the U.S. intelligent community is spilling a lot of Russian tea right now, they say. That yesterday, current and former U.S. officials leaked that members of President Trump's campaign team were in regular touch with Russian intelligence officials leading up to the 2016 election. They say this was happening around the time Russia was interfering with the election. They also say there's no evidence that Trump's campaign worked with Russia on this interference. Also yesterday, it was reported Russia violated a Cold War era treaty by deploying a land missile. Wow, this comes at a time when the Trump administration doesn't have a permanent national security advisor to weigh in. I mean, earlier this week, you know, you had, uh, you know, yesterday, National Advisor Michael Flynn resigned. Back in December, former President Obama announces sanctions against Russia for election meddling. That same day, Rhea, Flynn had a series of conversations with Russia's ambassador to the U.S. I mean, Flynn repeatedly denied that he discussed the sanctions with the ambassador. Since then, several U.S. intelligence officials have raised their hands to say erroneous and they have the call transcripts to prove that Flynn may have even suggested the incoming Trump administration would be open to lifting these sanctions. I mean, then it came out that the Justice Department actually briefed the Trump administration last month on all, everything that I've said. It's unclear what the administration did with that information. But not only did Flynn possibly mislead his White House co-workers about his conversations with the Russian ambassador, he might possibly, might possibly have lied to the FBI. If this would be true, it could be a felony. I mean, the Trump administration says today that Flynn resigned because of trust issues, not legal issues. And the real concern is finding the source of all these intelligent leaks. Critics, including some Republicans, say there needs to be an independent investigation into Flynn. For months, there have been huge questions about the Trump team's ties to Russia. Those questions, Rhea, are not going away. Meanwhile, Trump still doesn't have a full senior staff in place to help him address major foreign issues. I mean, this is this is uh, incredible what's going on, Ria. Yeah, that's not going to go away in a hurry, is it? Um, I could I could go into some some uh, other backstory around it, but we need to get a move on. So but yeah, I don't see it going away. Right. I'm going to move on to something that uh, from Venezuela, news from Venezuela, because they've got to get a shout because I don't think they're making the mainstream your side and they are in a terrible state. I was privileged to be part of a phone call from a young guy calling out of Venezuela, 21 years old. If you would have got caught calling out to the outside world to let them know what's going on inside Venezuela, it wouldn't have been good for him in the worst possible way. But during this phone call, because they're starving, they've got no water. There's, there's, it's just complete breakdown in Venezuela. They are now trying to get out of the country any route possible to any of the neighboring countries. You've got Guyana on the east, you've got Brazil in the south, and you've got Colombia in the west. Getting out there anywhere, getting across the border into the other country, committing a crime to get put in prison to be fed. Wow. So that is how bad it is in Venezuela. And this young lad risked his life. To, that he, that's what he said on the call. He said, look, I'm either going to starve to death or someone and other people can try and reach out to the rest of the world to let them know what's going on here. So that's, that's a big one from Venezuela, Dean. Back to you. Wow, Rhea, that's, uh, that's incredible, that story. Uh, you know, to finish out uh, the show, unless you have more to share, uh, I want to just get into uh, a little bit of a closing of uh, this week's uh, what's gone on with uh, the lead sports story here. Uh, do you have anything else that you want to report? I do. I have about four more. I'll whiz through them quickly. Go so ahead. we try to stay on time. Go ahead. 
IMF news. Regular listeners know I'm, I'm, I'm learning about the IMF, which isn't that easy, and the World Bank, and they are intrinsically linked. But as we know in the past, I reported on Christine Lagarde, of the CEO of the IMF, International Monetary Fund, uh, went to court, wasn't fined. Oh, no, 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 no. She was found guilty, didn't attend court, no fine, no jail time. Well, as I've got my nose in digging around the IMF, I found a list of immunities. So I'm quickly going to read down these, and this will explain why Christine Lagarde didn't get her collar felt, as it were. Right. Um, so here's the first one. Im- th- this is to anybody. No, no, let me just go down here. So immunity from judicial process. So you can't bring any judicial process on them. You can't do it. They're mm-hmm. beyond the law, as it were. Next one, immunity from action. So you can't take an action against them. Immunity from archives. So you can't get into their archives. They're not audited. Freedom of assets from restriction. The money they have, they can do what they want with. Privilege of communications. They're allowed privacy. We are not. Eight, here's the one. Immunities from privileges of officers and employees. That is probably why they couldn't do anything to Christine Lagarde, because I think she's immune by that. And number nine, uh, immunities from taxation. So they're not taxed either. So I read that and think, "Mm, is there really one law for all? I don't think so. So I was on to the next one. I'm going to miss that one out and that one. Oh, news on pensions. If you have a pension plan, you probably need to check it if you haven't already because of the super low interest rates. Your expectations may be that it's going to look like this number and just check to see if it is that number. There's some advice as well. Quick one from the UK. This is quite a big one, actually. Planned Espionage Act could jail journalists and whistleblowers as spies. Exclusive proposals in the UK for a brutal new espionage act that could jail journalists as spies have been developed in haste by the legal advisers. So basically... Well, we've seen on the news, someone blows the whistle on a wrongdoing and then a journalist receives it, reports it, and then it's out there. Now they're saying if you're a journalist and you get handed anything by a whistleblower, you're under the Espionage Act if this goes through. Um, And that's it. I've got my clothes out, but it's back to the sport, Dean. Ria, unfortunately, with uh, with the closing of the sports, it's not about uh, scoring touchdowns this week or hitting home runs that uh, the big story uh, in sports this week uh, has to do uh, coming out of uh, Madison Square Garden here in New York and uh, the NBA, the National Basketball Association. There was a horrific uh, altercation. Uh, at a New York uh, Knicks basketball game at Madison Square Garden last Wednesday that the New York Daily News reported, Frank Isola, a reporter from the Daily News, reported that, uh, you know, that Charles Oakley, a great, great former NBA basketball player, is still hurt over James Dolan's comments uh, uh, following a Monday meeting with Commissioner Adam Silver and the great former basketball player, uh, owner of the Charlotte Hornets, Michael Jordan. Rhea, there was just a horrific, ugly, all over mainstream media this entire week of of a former great basketball player known and respected throughout by his peers great basketball player and you so, you keep seeing news clips of this 69 towering former big basketball player um getting into a fight with uh James Dolan who is CEO of Cablevisions Corporation and he's executive chairman of Madison Square Garden and owner of the New York Knicks, uh, the for those people in Europe and all throughout the world, uh, the New York Knicks uh, are are probably the biggest uh, brand franchise in the National Basketball Association, and this building that's monumental in New York City called Madison Square Garden is the most famous sports venue, prob an event venue, Rhea, probably not just in New York. 
but uh, in the world, Madison Square Garden. I don't know if you ever heard of it, Rhea. Madison Square Garden? I think you'd have to live on the moon not to have heard it, Dean. (laughs) But this week, throughout mainstream, uh, everywhere you look, um, unfortunately, it's not about winning or losing or hitting home runs. It's uh, it's just this horrific, uh, you know, just uh, there's a tremendous altercation and confrontation that's going on between Dolan and uh, this former player. And uh, supposedly uh, it's it's been mentioned that uh, Dolan, who owns the Knicks, uh, is not warm and fuzzy, not just with Charles Oakley but with other former players as well. So unfortunately, that's that's the big story. There's all kinds of political elements that are getting in, involved with this. Um, this story, it's even uh, it's even mentioned, I mean, throughout, I mean, throughout the New York medias, uh, you know, Stefan Bondi from the New York Daily News, he even talks about producer Spike Lee showing his support for Charles Oakley for wearing his jersey to Sunday's game. Lee says he's emotional. And when learning of Oakley's arrest, he just wants Oakley and the organization to reconcile. I mean, right now, this former player People are up in arms because there is a indefinite ban on him being able to come into Madison Square Garden and watch the New York Knicks. He's been banned at this point. So um, it's uh, that's the big story in sports this week. Unfortunately, it's not about uh, it's not about hitting home runs and uh, scoring touchdowns. It's uh, unfortunately a story that uh, that's between management, and former players. So on that note, anything else that you want to share, Ria? Yeah, as you listen to it all, you go, God, goodness, what's happening to the world? Yeah, I'm going to close out. As reported, I reported it, I don't know, a few weeks ago, where George Orwell's book, 1984, is flying off the shelves for various different reasons. You've got the people that are in touch with it anyway, and they know the book. And there were some things said which put it put it bang it's just flying off the shelves going on kindles and all that all that but i was going to leave you with a phrase that george orwell said that who was the writer of 1984 the the book in question and the phrase is those who control the information control the people that's it lovely listeners i love you all tell people that you love that you love them more often because we need love in this world right now back to you Dean. Rhea listen thank you very much for a great uh, weekly news roundup show thank you so much appreciate it as always and uh, I just want to uh, thank all of our listeners for being with us today and I just want to say from all of us at the Dean Blackman show have a great day bye bye now you've been listening to the Dean Blackman show live from Long Island New York From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.